So in the last video, we arrived at this function here, this, this set of functions, one function for each value of n. And we said that this, this is what satisfies our boundary conditions. Our, our boundary conditions that, that each end of the string, and the string has length l, each end of the string is fixed. And here I've drawn some 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 example functions for for n equals one, two, and three. So what's happening here? So so when n equals one, we know that the roots of sine are are zero, pi, two pi, on and on, etc. So so when n equals one, x equal so first x equals zero. We start at this point. X equals zero. That zero, and and as we as we increase x, we 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 trace along the sine function, and then and then at x equals l, we hit our first root. So that's where, since n equals one and l over l equals one, this is sine pi, and and sine pi is zero. So we get that this point here is zero, and that satisfies our boundary condition, just like we wanted. And so if if n equals two, the a similar thing happens. So so, so the the argument increases twice as fast since since n equals two. So when when x x only has to equal l over two to for the for for us to get the sine pi for us to get to the first root of the sine function. So it gets to it gets back to zero, and then and it goes back down. It go, it goes negative when when we go past pi, sine gets negative, and then when we get to two pi, it gets back to zero. And, and the same thing for, for n equals three, except obviously n equals three, so we end up with actually three bumps. And so I've I've drawn these red red points, and those are points that that don't move, right? So so here we have so if I had included t, which I didn't, but if I had included t, you can imagine that that this, the wave, or if the string takes this shape, it'll be moving up and down. So at a later time t, it'll it'll look like this dotted line. So it's going up and down. And so the red the red points are points that never move. And and so for n equals two, we have we have one node, right? And then for n equals three, we have two nodes. And if you've you've studied waves much at all before, you'll you might recognize these as as standing waves. And and what is a standing wave? Well, it's just it's just a, a wave or a or a if it's vibrating at the right frequency or the right the right value of k, which here we have n pi over l. So if it's at the right value of k, it will actually just you know it will it will take this form where it looks like the wave isn't moving and it's just it's just wiggling up and down. And that's what's meant by standing wave. And you can you can think of it as as a wave pulse moving and hitting this barrier and then coming back and interfering with itself and when it interferes with itself it'll it'll that's when the wave will be flat and then when it when it when it, or when it destructively interferes with itself with itself the wave will be flat and when and when it constructively interferes with itself that's when it'll be at its peak either high or low it'll be at its peak so we've we found our standing waves by by solving our wave equation with this with these boundary conditions, and that's great. But but, but what about something like this, right? This this satisfies our boundary conditions. It has it's zero at both ends, and it's it's you know it's 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 not broken anywhere. It's it's not. It's not coming to to a perfectly sharp point anywhere, so it, you know that this, at least in x, satisfies our wave equation. So, so what's the deal with this guy? Well, without proving it to you, I'll I'll just tell you that any wave function that satisfies the wave equation and our boundary conditions. So here I'll write it as y of x, right? Capital Y. Just to say that's our total wave function, it can be expressed as a sum, or or as a as a linear combination. And a linear combination is just what I'm writing down here. So 
So I'll use a small y for our for our standing wave functions. So small y if n equals one of x. So all this is saying is that that it's this y labeled with n equals one is just this function with with n equals one. So it's this first standing wave. That that wave function. And, oops. It's unsatisfied with my parenthesis. So so it's a sum over all of the different possible standing wave functions. So n equals two of x. And then the same thing for n equals three and four and on on and on till infinity, as if you need that many. So any complicated thing that satisfies the wave the wave equation and our boundary conditions can be expressed as a linear combination of these of these standing wave functions. And that just means we're adding them up with, with a certain weighting factor in front of them. And 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 you can build any other function out of these other functions. And that's that's a consequence of the of the property we mentioned before where where the solution to a differential equation can be the you know a linear combination of its other solutions and and again I, I guess I won't go into the details of differential equations but 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 this this is the case and this is an important result because we can we can we can if we want to know things about this we can just break it into how much n equals one character and how much n equals two character that it has and, and and analyze it based on that instead of just solving this ridiculously crazy function. And this this idea right here is is the main idea of something called Fourier analysis or or Fourier de depending on how how hard or soft you want to pronounce this R. Fourier analysis. He's a French fellow, so I suppose this R might be rather soft, but but there's there's great disagreement in how to to pronounce his name, and 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 I actually don't think that this is covered as of right now when I'm making this video on Khan Academy, but and so because of that, at some point I will I will include this in in some playlist or probably make a playlist. All about it and and the things related to it, but but anyway, I just wanted to put this put this term in your mind to, so to link these two ideas because that's this is a, a big thing in physics and and um, and it's it's important you know as long as we're talking about it to to give you the name. And just as a bit more of a concrete example, I'll I'll talk about a guitar string. So here we have our guitar string and it's it's vibrating in some way. And we have a guitar here. And we it's a maybe it's a maybe it's a classical guitar, it has quite a wide neck. So this is our this is our guitar, and our guitar string is vibrating in some way. And uh, perhaps this example will only help if you if you know something about music in the first place, but but we know that if this guitar string is vibrating, the reason it sounds so funny, and, and actually at Khan Academy there's a there's a playlist called Vi Heart, it's named after the creator of the videos and, and she has one video all about or all about this kind of thing, or or not maybe not all about it, but um, that will that's a it's a good thing, it's a fun video as well to look at just to see this this example in more detail. But we know that that when this string is vibrating, it's actually producing several notes, and each of those notes corresponds to to some to one of these functions, to one of these standing wave functions on the string, and it's vibrating all over the place. So it's actually a sum, a sum of all those different frequencies that you hear. And so, hopefully, this example helped. But and I, I guess I'll I'll spell out by heart for you by heart and 
and I'm not affiliated with Khan Academy in any way, but I just think that if someone's trying to learn from these videos, they should they should know of other good resources. By heart to to know about this guitar or see see another another explanation of it. But all right, well in the next video, I'm going to to introduce the idea of quantum mechanics and all. And just to give you a preview, it's all about the fact that matter acts like a wave. And these, the properties, this property of a wave that you can divide it into to, to, to standing waves or, or normal modes would be another term you could use to, to describe these, is that, that, that matter actually does this too. And so, um, I, I, that's for the next video, so, and so I will see you in the next video.